Raise your hand if you consider yourself to be an entrepreneur of some kind. Part-time, full-time, hobbyist. Oh, uh, okay. I know I can't actually see you, but I trust that your hand is raised. Mine is. What's one of the most difficult parts of being an entrepreneur? Obviously, there's all the paperwork and the hustle and the this and the that. But at the end of the day, it kind of all boils down to money. Earning what we are worth. Asking to get paid what we are worth. It can be so tricky. And women especially, we struggle with this. We are so quick to undervalue and undercharge what we're worth. My guest today is tackling this issue head on. Welcome to Business with Purpose. I'm your host, Molly Stillman of Still Being Molly, and this show is all about bringing you the stories behind the brands, companies, and small businesses that are changing the world. Each week, I interview an entrepreneur, a CEO, nonprofit director, or just an incredible person who's trying to make a positive impact, not only through their personal life, but also with their career. My goal is to show you that no matter what you do for a living, you can make an impact wherever you are. My guest this week is Brandy Riley, blogger at Mama Knows It All and the founder of the incredible online community for creative female entrepreneurs, Courage to Earn. Brandy is a thought leader and a powerhouse in the content creation industry, and she's used her knowledge, skills, and passion to inspire thousands of women to pursue their creative purposes and get paid for them. I am so inspired by her work each and every day, and I know that you will be too. So now, on to my conversation with Brandy. Brandy, I am so excited to have uh, you on the show today. You are just somebody I look up to so much, and I have loved following over the years. And so I just am so grateful for you to come and on what I know is, you know, you have a really busy schedule. You are doing all of the things, and so I'm just so grateful you, for you to be with us today. Thank you for having me, Molly. I adore you and I love what you're doing. And I'm just really actually honored to be on your show today. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, well, I, so a couple of months ago, back in February, um, I had Natasha Nichols on the show and we talked about how we met and you and I met actually through the same thing. And Natasha and I joked that it was the time we almost got kidnapped and that like, they like almost took our like major organs from us because we didn't know what we were doing <laughs> and it was how we went to LA for this crazy thing called mom fronts and um, that time that we we got invited out there and we weren't allowed to tell anybody why we were going um, but in the end while we got paid for doing something that we didn't actually really do anything for <laughs> Uh, it ended up just bringing so many amazing content creators together and I'm so grateful that I got to know you through that yeah, and we got to go to Lionel Richie's house. Yes. So that was a <laughs> that was a plus. <laughs> yes. Anytime you get to go to Lionel Richie's house, you know like <laughs> it's a good time. <laughs> Um, for sure, for sure. <laughs> yes. Well, when so when I met you in 2015, um, you were obviously doing all the things and blogging with uh, Mama Knows It All. Um, but then since that time, you have launched something called Courage to Earn, which we're going to talk about. Um, but before we dive into all of that, I'm going to have you do what all my guests do, and that's give us the Brandy 101. So who are you? How did you get to where you are today? And, and what do you do? So I am Brandy Riley. I live in Oakland, California. I've been here for about five years. I moved here from Philadelphia, um, but originally I am from North Carolina, from Durham, North Carolina. Wait, um, yeah. how did I not know this? I know. I think, you know what? I think I started the conversation. I asked you, like, are you from North Carolina um, originally? And then something else came up before I could finish the, oh my <laughs> finish gosh. my thought. But yes, I'm from Durham, North Carolina. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. I told, yeah, I totally missed that. Wait, so did you like, did you go to school here? Yeah, I went to high school there. I went to Jordan high school, oh my which gosh. might be very to you. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. That yeah, I mean we Jordan is like where I where my recording studio is, Jordan is a quarter of a mile from here. Oh my god. That's so funny. What a small world. Okay, I did not know that about you. Okay, so now I love yes. you even more cuz you're from Durham. So <laughs> From Durham, moved to Philadelphia, lived there um for 9 years. I was doing theater out there um and that's where I had my daughter. Then I met my husband, 
and he dragged me kicking and screaming. Not really. He dragged me out to North Carolina, which <laughs> I love, to uh, to Northern California, which is like home now. Yeah. Um, and we also have a two year old son. Um, our 10 year old daughter, um, my husband and me. And so we just absolutely love it here. I started blogging when my daughter was just about to turn one. It was just to kind of get my thoughts out. I had no idea I could earn an income from it. I just knew that I had all these feelings and I had to get them out somehow. So I just started a a free blog on Blogger. I had some pictures on my phone. They were thumbnail type pictures. You know, I uploaded them talking about my daughter's first birthday party. And, um, and it kind of took off from there. From there, I, um, I started joining some Yahoo groups for bloggers and discovered that people were not just blogging just because it was fun or just for community, but also because they could make money from it. So I started earning an income pretty quickly from from my site, which was a blessing because I worked in a nonprofit. I was underpaid, overworked, and I needed the extra income. So it really changed my life. Like starting a blog actually changed my life. Um, A few years later, I started working for some influencer marketing networks. So these are companies that hire bloggers to do um, to do work for brands and things like that. So I worked at a couple of those, worked my way up, worked at some big conferences as social media manager um, and then started doing some social media management kind of freelance contract work. I realized when I was talking to so many different people across so many Um, different platforms that the one thing that stood out to me was that women were not talking about money. Mm -hmm. Like anytime you talk to them about why do you do what you do is always about, I'm passionate about it. I want to help people. I want to serve people. And I think that's awesome. But I also believe it's okay that we make money doing what we do. So I started Courage to Earn really as a challenge to bloggers, um, digital content creators to figure out how to make more money. And um, as it started, my stepmother was uh, diagnosed with cancer and she passed away pretty quickly. Mm. And just in reflecting on her life, you know, cleaning out her home and looking at old pictures and reminiscing about the woman that she was, it became clear to me that there was a missed opportunity in her life to be able to follow her dreams. She was an amazing seamstress. I mean, she just was so talented. I haven't met anyone as talented as she was in that area. And she just never went after that dream of creating her own line or, you know, making a business out of it because there wasn't anybody really around her to support her and say, you know what, we got your back. You can do this. People will pay for this. You can leave your job that stresses you out, that you've been at forever, that barely pays you anything, that makes you have to work two jobs where you're always tired to do this thing that brings you joy. And I realized that was what was missing for a lot of us is the courage and the support and the, the, also like the how to do it you yeah. know we all feel empowered by oprah and beyonce and things like that but like how did they become that that's the part that was missing for a lot of us the courage and the how to so that's what um courage to earn my community is it is a place where women can go to be empowered and um and to learn how to make money and how to feel okay about making money so it's the emotions behind it as well Brandy, I well, I will just say, like, as somebody who has been a part of the Courage to Earn community for, um, I mean, I guess I joined it pretty shortly after you you launched it, and it has been, it, it is one of the most amazing spaces on the internet. Um, and you have created and fostered a community that is so unique. Because let's be honest, uh, when you usually get a group of women together, especially on the internet, um, it can get ugly real quick. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I have not experienced that at all in Courage to Earn. It has been nothing but a community of encouragement and support, um, but also women who will like, they'll hold your feet to the fire and they'll say, yeah. no, 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 you said you were going to do this and why yeah. haven't you done this? Or, or I know that you are worth more than this, or you need to be 
standing up and, and you need to be, you know, speaking out against whatever this thing is. Like these are women that will hold you accountable. They will challenge you. They will encourage you. Um, they will hold, like I said, they'll hold your feet to the fire. And that is rare. What do you think it is about the community that you have fostered that has made it so unique and so special like that? Because it really is a rare gem of the internet <laughs> that I have just found that community. What do you think is that is kind of that, I hate to say secret sauce, because uh, that's yeah. so cliche, but it's the only word that comes <laughs> to mind. Well, I think, first of all, thank you for that, because that is really the goal, is it for, for it to be just a place where people feel safe, but can also be real. And I think, you know, the the first seed, I think that plant that was planted to make it like that is that I really opened it up with the with the goal of being transparent and so from the very beginning I said you know transparency we're going to share everything we're going to be transparent and then I stuck to it so I think we use that word sometimes and we don't use it the way that it means like transparent means like not just saying oh I got this great opportunity and I'm telling you guys about it because I'm transparent it's like no I got this great opportunity here's where it came from here's how much it paid and maybe you can get it too. So I think, you know, starting from there was how it kind of got its culture or it began the culture that um, that has become known for. Um, and then from there is just having great people to support the community along with me. So um, Michelle Garrett, uh, she is one of my good friends and she is a community manager there. And then I have my friend Amira Martin who... Um, who supports as she can. And then also um, Lynn Wiltsey. She is someone who I brought on just last year because she understands the culture of it. So having people who are there to help make sure they're moderating comments and people are being seen and people are being heard and supported is super important. Yeah. And I love that you brought up that point about how it's it's become a, a community where it really does kind of epitomize collaboration and community over competition and not seeing like coming from a, a an abundance mindset and not a scarcity mindset and really understanding that like there is enough work there's enough money out there to be made and if you know you brandy get this collaboration and with this brand it doesn't necessarily mean that i'm not going to get that or that there's not an opportunity that is similar out there for me um and i can cheer for you and your successes and that doesn't diminish or uh negate my own do you know what i mean Exactly, exactly. And you know what else, Molly? It's also sharing opportunities that are good for me and being honest with ourselves about why they may not be good for you, mm -hmm. you know, and that everything doesn't have to be fair. And I'm glad you brought up mindset because that's really one of the big focus of the group is helping people to um, to just be aware of their mindset. Are you looking at things as if there's nothing else to have because one person has something? Are you looking at something like this is for me and that is okay? And this is for her and that is okay? Or are you looking at, I just want what everybody has, even if it's not good for me? So I am really, um, and I know I get on people's nerves sometimes, but I don't care. <laughs> it is really <laughs> important for me to like call those things out because I think sometimes our mindset is what's holding us back and we're not even aware of it, you know? So we're worried about things that are of no concern to us, don't matter, um, aren't even something that we really want, but we kind of get caught in that cycle of seeing people have stuff. And so we start pining for that instead of working towards the thing that is good for us. And we really try to like call that out, encourage to earn also, obviously, you know, in a way that's supportive and kind, but, you know, making sure that people don't want to get invited to this opportunity just because it looks like it's fun, but because it actually fits in with their goals and the things that they want to achieve. Yes, that is such a good point um, of call of really calling that out and, and coming from that. Yeah, just really having that the right mindset as you do 
business. Um, yeah. One of the things that I really want to touch on, um, and and one of the reasons that I wanted to have you on this uh, on this on the podcast, other than just the fact that I love you and I think you're amazing, um, but also because you have just done such an amazing job of using your platform. And, and you know, you started out this blog, uh, Mama Knows It All, because you wanted to just kind of share bits and pieces of your daughter's life and, and your life as a mom. And it was, you know, free back on Blogger. Oh, man. And remember when <laughs> advertising used to just be like a button that your friend would like uh, buy like a little ad space. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, those were the days when you were like, yeah, I got $25 a month from my friend. Yes. Oh man. <laughs> oh, so good. Um, but yeah, you, you started this out and then over the years, as you grew in your craft and you, you know, got better in your writing and, and as your blog grew and it became more of a business for you and you realize that like there deep inside, there was this greater passion that you had um, for just encouraging other women in their business pursuits and their creative business pursuits. And it is it is such a need because it is something that uh, I have struggled with in, you know, I have been blogging for 12 years and I have been doing it, you know, full time. Like this has been my full time job for six years. And yet uh, I still struggle constantly with knowing my value and my worth and charging for the work that I do. And, and sometimes like, you know, as women, men don't struggle with this at all, (laughs) but Mm -hmm. women, we will struggle with like, Oh, but I don't, I feel bad charging or like, Oh, I feel, I feel guilty for charging money for doing this thing. And men don't struggle with that. No. Um, No. Um, So I I would love for you to just kind of share, you know, along the way, I mean, you shared kind of a little bit about this in your Brandy 101, but really as you kind of realized that this was an issue women were struggling with, and then since you launched Courage to Earn, what has been sort of the path that maybe you've been on personally, or you've seen other women kind of travel in their journey of realizing that like, no, 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 like this is work. We are doing work. Yes, we love it. And it's our passion and we enjoy it. But it's also important for us to know our value and and to charge for the work that we're doing. Because again, men would not struggle with this like women do. Oh, no, Mm -mm, not at all. I can tell you that for me, recognizing my worth has been and is still an ongoing process. Um, It started even before I was um, blogging and in this community the way that I am now. I had started my blog, but I wasn't as engrossed in it um, when I first realized that I am underpaid. And this was at my full-time nonprofit job. I was indispensable. I mean, I was writing curriculum for students from kindergarten through the 12th grade. I was training at least 300 teachers every summer, creating trainings for them. Um, I was hiring teachers. I was mentoring them through the year. I mean, I was, this was my, this was my passion. This was my purpose in life was to do this work. Even when I went away on maternity leave, you know, I created all the curriculum, um, bought all the supplies for 1700 students. Like I made sure all that was done before I went away on maternity leave for summer camp. And, um, and it had been five years since I had gotten a title change since I had gotten a raise. And once I had my daughter and I found that I was having a difficult time paying for childcare and my rent at the same time, (laughs) I had to choose one or the other. Um, every time I got paid, I had to pick a bill and I could never just pay anything in full. I was like, you know what? I deserve more. You know, when I started looking at other jobs and seeing how much other people were paid, I went to my boss and I asked for, um, I asked for a raise. I asked for a title change and he was amazing, but he didn't understand why I needed it. Mm. Don't you love this job? Aren't you, aren't you happy? Are you not happy? We can give you something else to do if you're not happy. And that wasn't it. And I realized I can be happy in my work and still get paid what I'm worth. Mm. Um, And so it took a couple of weeks before I got a title change. And it was another few months before I got a raise. Um, But 
it was that point that I realized, okay, nobody is going to look out for me. They knew that they needed me. My boss loved me. I loved working for him. I loved working with him. But they weren't looking to just throw money at me because I was such a great person. And that's when it became clear to me that I had to be the person to, like, look out for myself financially. When I started blogging, I was just getting started. So the $25 blog post, you know, the $100 for three or four blog posts, that was amazing to me, especially, again, as a single mom who was underpaid and they paid quickly. But as I grew, just like with any other job, and I got better at my craft and um, I gained, I grew my audience and I became better at taking pictures I realized it was kind of the same situation as the full-time position. You know, now I'm in a, I've grown, I've, I've, I have more skills. I'm more experienced. I need to get paid more money. Yeah. And I think that as women, sometimes we allow our hearts to take over what our mind knows is right. And I hate to say this cause it's a man, but, and, you know, and I would love to say that it was a woman who helped me with this, but really it was my husband. Yeah. It was my husband who, you know, pointed out to me when I would get opportunities and I would be thrilled about them. And he would say, you know, babe, this is so awesome. I'm proud of you, but you know, this is too much work for what they're paying. Now I'm looking at contracts that are like $2,000, you know, <laughs> this mm -hmm. is like, I get to make $2,000 from my house. And he's like, yeah, but you know, looking at, and he would break it down and say, I think this is worth $6,000, you know, but yeah. you know, and he, and he would try to soften, soften it, you know, but what do I know? I'm not a blogger, but <laughs> I just think that you could make $6,000 for this. <laughs> and yeah. I'd be like, okay. Um, and then when we, um, you know, when we got married, and I moved to another full-time position and I was so thankful, like it was the most money I had ever made in my career um, for an annual salary. And again, he was like, yeah, you shouldn't negotiate it. You just always negotiate. And my husband is just the sweetest, kindest, like most chill man. He does not get upset. He doesn't yell. But when it comes to negotiation, he is a beast. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, he was the one who really taught me like they want you anyway. If you ask for more and they don't have it, it's all good. You can say, you can still say yes. And I was like, that is such a simple, simple um, idea. You know, like just ask for what I want. And if they don't get it, I can still take the job if I want to. And so that's just kind of where I started changing the way that I think about how much I should be making and how much um, I should be asking for with work. And so I just share that with women. And like I said, it's an ongoing process. And I share as I'm kind of in the moment in real time. Mm -hmm. So there have been times when I've shared with folks that, man, I took this job and it is paying less than I wanted. And I took it anyway. And now it is driving me crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, like I really wish I would have just said no because it's not worth the headache. Yeah. And even... Sometimes when it pays well, it's not worth the headache. But again, with the transparency, just letting women know that, you know, there are going to be times where you have to kind of play around with the money. You know, it's not always, a, you know, one blog post equals $100 or one month of social media management equals $2,000. Like you have to look at the job. You have to make a calculation based on the energy that you're going to put out your desire to actually do the work, <laughs> you know, how difficult it is for you, how much research you might have to do. Are you going to have to leave your house? Are mm -hmm. you going to have to find somebody to watch your kids? And then you calculate it like that based on your own individual needs. So just really learning that through trial and error for myself um, gave me really the tools to be able to share it with the community. And I realized a lot of women think that asking for money or negotiating is um, is a trait of greediness. Mm. And then again, men just they don't think that they don't think that at all. It's it's business. It's not personal. Yeah. And it's hard for us because as content creators, um, we are very personable and we get friendly with people and we look at folks as, you know, as our buddies. And we want to make sure that we're not making them feel uncomfortable. But 
I started to realize that if we're feeling uncomfortable about talking about money, then that's that has nothing to do with the other person. Yeah. There are other issues that are underlying that maybe relate to the way that we grew up or maybe, you know, the, our schooling or for some of us, our faith and things like that. And we just have to start looking at that part and not at the other person, not at what they're making us feel like, but at what we feel ourselves about talking about this issue. Okay, I'm gonna take a quick break from my chat with Brandy to share with you something I am so excited about, and that is the launch of the fall collection with Seiko Designs. This collection is literally incredible. You will be inspired by the richness of the season's colors like pebbled amore and oiled olive. Let the fall collection not only be a celebration of travel, but a celebration of the journey within. My favorite pieces are the multi-way shawl in Leo, the How It's Made Matters tee, and the caftan in Chianti. They are going to be on repeat all season. Oh, and uh, not to mention the multi-way tunic sweater in black that can be worn five different ways. Versatility is my love language. To shop this incredible collection, go to SeikoDesigns.com slash Molly Stillman. That's S-S-E-K-O Designs.com slash Molly Stillman. Now back to my chat with Brandy. I love that you brought up that point about how and this, this women really struggle with like the they feel like they're being greedy. Um, and there's there's a statistic that um you know, there's just in general in business and in the corporate world, women who negotiate for like a promotion or compensation increase are 30 percent more likely than men who negotiate to receive feedback um, that the women are, are heard that they're bossy. They're too aggressive. Yeah. They're intimidating. They're a nag, all these kinds of things. So like in a lot of ways, just kind of the the system has been set up in a way that like women have been told over the years that they're bossy and aggressive and nagging and intimidating and all these things. So then we just, we retreat and we yeah. don't mm-hmm. want to continue to, to be confident. It's not about being aggressive or bossy or intimidating right. or a nag. We're just confident. It's like, no, no, no. I, you know, I've done this work for 10 years or 12 years or five years or whatever it is. Yeah. Like I've done the work. Like I've put in the time I've built the audience. Um, and you're paying me for that that 12 years of work that I've put in. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, the last couple of jobs that I've had, full-time positions that I've had. So I also work full-time in addition to my very full-time businesses. And I just love it. Um, I just like, I'm one of those people where I have to stay busy um, or I get bored and I get an idle mind and that's not good. (laughs) Then I start procrastinating. But you know, my last couple of full-time positions I've negotiated and you know, really what I learned is the less we can say, and you can still be your positive, upbeat, optimistic person. You know, I'm super excited for this opportunity. Thank you so much. You know, I appreciate the salary you're offering. I, I was looking for more like X, Y, Z and this is why let's let me know if you can get close to that you know and every time even though and and the the trick is and i hope none of my bosses are listening but the trick is you go over even what you think you want mm. so that hopefully you guys can find a you know point somewhere very close to what you actually want um mm. and it makes you feel empowered it makes you feel empowered when you get that email back that says, you know what, we can do that, <laughs> you know, or even, you know, we really love you. Um, is it any way you can go to this amount? That's a lot closer to what you were looking for. Um, and I have this tip, Molly, that I have to share with ladies. One thing that I think that we get nervous with is just waiting you know, and, you know, we get anxious when we ask for what we want and then there is silence. And to me, I've always found that silence is a good thing because it means that people are thinking, you know, and so don't take that silence as um, as something to make you feel scared so that you don't ask for more the next time because the last time you asked, it took them a week or two weeks. Or in some cases, I've waited a month Mm. for people to get back to me to say, okay, we can pay you what you feel like you're worth because we really want to work with you. That silence is good. So all of these different 
emotions and feelings that we have about money, we have to just learn to sit in them and and really anticipate them. Like I anticipate that I am going to be on edge until I hear back from this five figure contract yeah. until I hear back from this, you know, huge opportunity that I've worked really hard to put a pitch deck together for and just know that it's coming and be okay with the nervousness and the anxiousness and, and really kind of relish in that because man, what a wonderful thing to be able to have so many opportunities at your fingertips, you know, so many possibilities. That's an exciting thing. Possibility is fun. (laughs) Yes. I could not agree more because it really does create like when you, when you get the ideas in your head and you think like, Oh man, like if this is possible, then what else is also possible? And it, it encourages women. And then when you see other women saying, Hey, you know, and that's what I love. One of the things I love about the courage to earn community is that, you know, it's given me kind of that vision to see other women getting paid, you know, this amount of money to do this work. And I go, man, I can do that. Uh, like yeah. that is in, is in my wheelhouse or maybe it's not with that brand or that company, but, oh, I could do this with, with this other brand or this other company, or it, it opens up a world of possibilities to be creative and really begin yes. to think outside of, of the box and to push ourselves to create, um, you know, a higher level of um, content, um, just the higher mm-hmm. quality content. And it, it creates also an understanding in the industry, in this strange, strange industry that we have created as women. So like, bizarre. So like, bizarre. <laughs> yes, moms, like women created the influencer industry as we know it. And yep. And, and so, you know, if if women make up the majority of this industry, how are we as a whole standing for each other and and setting the expectation with brands and companies and PR agencies and whoever it is that we're interacting with that like, no, no, we we are a legit industry. We do the work. We are generating revenue. We are, you know, we are working hard. Um, but, you know, how how can we hold each other accountable so that we can create a, a set of expectations that brands and companies then come to kind of hold as, as truth, as fact or whatever? Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if I'm wording that correctly, but you, you know what I'm saying, where they say, yeah. okay, well, this is now something that, that major corporations are going to be budgeting for because they see the value in it. Um, yes. Yeah. Oh man, I could go on, but (laughs) I mean, it's really, it's so amazing. And that is something that we have to just keep reminding each other of, you know, this industry would not exist if not for, uh, for us, Mm -hmm. it it could not continue if all of the moms were to say, you know what, I'm not going to do this anymore. It would just fall flat on its face. Now there are some, you know, filler ends, you know, I mean, but for the most part, the moms, the women are the ones who are really, and, you know, people use this phrase all the time, but it's true, moving the needle. They know that we have star power. Look at how many real moms are big time influencers. You can look on Instagram and see that they have hundreds of thousands of real followers. Like these are other human beings who are looking at regular moms who are at home in their houses, cleaning, cooking, taking care of their kids. And people are interested in that. And they want to know, who are you using to clean? You know, what are you using to clean with? What are you eating? What brands are you wearing? What brands are your kids wearing? So it's really, it's, I mean, it's really amazing. And if that doesn't give you confidence, I mean, goodness, that really should. (laughs) Yes, yes. And I love that this industry is an industry that is dominated by women and how we really have you know, set of set ourselves apart as we're a legitimate industry. This is a, an industry to be taken seriously, and um, I I always love to share the statistic uh, because my husband's name is John. Uh, that there are more CEOs named John than there are women CEOs. What? Like yes. Oh my God. Like of like major corporations, major companies, there are more CEOs just named John, not men, just men named John, named John. than there are women, wow. period. And um, so I always like, my husband and I always laugh because his name is John and, you know, but 
we just that's incredible oh my gosh see i didn't know that yeah. i had no idea and yep. women that means that we got to get up in those c-suites we got to get up there right and women are like we are running businesses i yes. mean molly with your podcast like you are meeting people and networking and in charge of how you want it to sound and i, I mean like this is these are things that people have teams of 15 and 20 and 30 to do. And I know because I've worked on video projects where there's like one person who kind of answers the emails and there's seven people copied on it. You know, it's like, but here we are at our homes, finding studios up the street from our house so we can drop the kids off, run and do work and then come back before the kids are home. You know, like we are so brilliant. Yes. We are so brilliant. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, oh, gosh, Brandy, I could talk to you all day about this stuff. Um, but, I, you know, before we kind of get into our wrap up session or where we ask some fun get to know you questions, um, Brandy, what is your vision for Courage to Earn here in, in the immediate future, in the, you know, in the five, like, what's the five year plan? Like, what do you see? courage to earn doing for women uh here in you know in the future yeah that is the question that I ask myself all the time (laughs) (laughs) well you know I'm in a period of transition over the last few years it's really been about the community that I have and focusing on them and really this year a lot of the people that I've been meeting who have been giving me just support in terms of expanding and growing to be able to reach more women have got me thinking about how to make a more global impact. So, I mean, my goal for the next two to five years is um, opportunities for women to find jobs and also to hire other women for um, for digital positions. I also want to do more in-person meetups. We have a retreat every year and it's it's sold out every year because there's only 25 slots. But for those 25 women every year, just the impact that it has on them is tremendous. So I really want that for more women. And then ultimately, I want Courage to Earn to be a place where women go to learn. So I want it to be like the go-to resource. So think like a LinkedIn, what Linda used to be before LinkedIn purchased it. Um, you know, I, that's what my, my vision is for it with an app and videos and lots and lots of content and just an opportunity for people to connect with other women who are telling them exactly how to do what it is that they want to do. Oh man, Brandy, that is so good and so needed. And I cannot wait, uh, for you to, to just, to just knock it out of the park. <laughs> um, Thank you. And, Thank I, you. <laughs> and I will continue to be a part of the community. I mean, I actually just joined Courage to Earn More, which is like yeah. your your step up, uh, which when we were at Mom 2.0 back in May, um, Carly Anderson and Amira, they were like, why aren't you encouraged to earn more? And I was like, wait a second. Why am I not? I don't know. So, <laughs> um, Well, I'm so glad you're there. Yeah, Courage to Earn More. It's it's interesting to have a, a larger community. So Courage to Earn is uh, like maybe 5,900 people. And the more group is about 100 And so, you know, we get to really drill down some of the topics that we talk about. It's hard. I mean, even when you're in a community where you work really hard to foster support and um, and trust, anytime you're in a group with more than, I think, three people, (laughs) you know, you, you get, you feel kind of vulnerable and out there. So Courage to Earn More is just an opportunity for people who are a little bit, um, more decided on what it is that they're working on to get some more uh, critical, intensive support. Yes, yes. And it's, that's, you know, Carly kind of described it to me as just like, she needed a group of women to really like push her. Um, And she was like, I really think that it's going to do that for you. So um, I'm excited because that's, that's kind of where I feel like, you know, when you get to that 
point, we've all reached that point in business. It literally doesn't matter what business you own, whether you own a product-based business mm-hmm. or you're a content creator or you're a CEO of a Fortune 500 company or you know, you're know you a financial advisor. Like It does not matter what business you're in. There are all, always those points in entrepreneurship where you feel like you hit a plateau or you feel yeah. like you're stuck and you just you're out of ideas or whatever it is. Um, And I've kind of, in the last year and a half, I've felt like I'm in a period of transition in a good way in my business and and just restructuring. I mean, I've been doing this for 12 years and um, I've been doing it full time for six, for half half that time. And so I feel like I'm like, something's got to change. Like I've kind of hit I've done the things that I've wanted yeah. that I think I wanted to do, but I know I want to do more, but I need that push. And so that's really what that community is for is to just give you that extra push, you know? Yeah. 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 We all need that. And I'm glad you said that Molly, because I think people feel like it's, they can't change or they can't do things differently mm-hmm. if they, especially if what they're doing is actually working, Yeah, you know, and it's, oh, it, that's totally okay. Just because it's working doesn't mean that you can't, do something to make you feel more excited about it again, yeah. because it does. It's, I mean, being an entrepreneur is just like any other job. As much as you started your thing because you were passionate about it, if you're not evolving and changing with the person that you're evolving and changing into every year, I mean, you started this, you didn't have any kids. Mm-hmm. You have two kids now, you know, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. you're, you're not the same Molly that you were 12 years ago. Yeah. So I'm glad you shared that because I don't think a lot of women realize that it doesn't mean that anything's wrong with them or their business if they just want something a little different. Yeah. Sometimes you got to just make a pivot and sometimes it's like yeah. a big pivot where you, you're turning like all the way around, you're doing something completely different. Sometimes it's just like a tiny little pivot. <laughs> right. Exactly. Just enough to like shake things up a little bit. Like a little baby step touch, you know? Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, okay. Brandy, I could, like I said, I could talk to you forever, uh, but we're going to transition just a little bit uh, to one of my favorite parts of the show. And that's where we get to know you a little bit and ask just kind of some fun questions. Uh, and as my listeners know, this is also the portion of the show when my executive producer husband inserts like a sound effect movie clip song of some sort to in, to kind of transition us to the get to know you round. We never know what it's going to be. It's always a surprise. So, Brandy, <laughs> are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> Irrational and emotionally fragile by nature, female co-workers are a peculiar animal. They are very insecure about their appearance. Be sure to tell them how good they look every day, even if they're homely and unkempt. You're doing a great job, Muriel, and you're prettier than Mamie Van Doren. And remember, nothing says good job like a firm, open palm slap on the behind. All right. This is a fun question I've never asked anyone, and I thought you would be a fun one to ask this question of. And that is, what is something that is, like, really popular right now, but in 10 years, everybody's going to look back and be really embarrassed by it? <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, my gosh. People are going to kill me for this, but I think doing a lot of stuff wearing your Mickey ears, <laughs> it's super popular right now but I think like in 10 years we're gonna be like 45 55 like what did I do (laughs) where's the mom in this picture (laughs) oh my gosh well uh so this airs in August but we're recording this obviously before that and uh we just got back from Disney like a couple weeks ago and my husband like I was (laughs) not even the kids I was the only one that wore Mickey ears like the entire trip. <laughs> I know. That is me. That is so me. And I'm like looking at, and I'm looking for pictures where I, I, I'm looking like an adult and there are none from our last Disneyland trip. <laughs> I'm like, oh gosh, okay. <laughs> it's totally fine. Um, I am right there along with you and I have no shame. It's fine. Um, that's amazing. Okay. Um, if you were a professional athlete um, and probably more like a baseball player, like think baseball, what would your mm-hmm. walk up?
up song be? You know how like all those athletes, like, they pick a song that they walk up to the mound yeah. to? What would your walk up song be? Um, Definitely Missy Elliott, Work It. Yes. Yeah, that would definitely be it. That's like my theme song in life. Is it so worth any it? song, Let me work anytime it. I need a song, that would be my theme song. <laughs> flip a thing now, flip it and reverse it. It's your. Yes. <laughs> I can't ever. I can't do that part. It's fine. Um, okay, of all of your pet peeves, which one do you think is the strangest? I do not like the sound of people. <laughs> eating popcorn in movie theaters <laughs> drives me crazy but I know that's what we do but I'm just like why are you guys chewing this popcorn <laughs> in the dark <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing that is amazing yeah oh I totally know what you're talking about yeah there are a lot of people actually who like their pet peeve is the sound of people eating I have a weird pet peeve where I don't like people eating on Instagram stories and I'm like, yes. Oh my gosh. What? I can't. I, I realize it doesn't bother some people. I can't like, I, and I, if you are my friend and you're listening and you've eaten on Instagram stories, it's totally fine. Um, it really, I can't listen to it. <laughs> I have I to tap either. through. I can't either. <laughs> okay. <I> can. <laughs> I'm so glad I'm not alone. Um, okay. If someone were to play you in a movie, who would you want it to be? Um, well, my son yesterday, we were watching YouTube videos and Taraji P. Henson came up. So I would want her to play. And he said, mommy, I was like, oh, that's a good choice, boo boo. <laughs> so I would say Taraji P. Henson. <laughs> that is a good choice. Oh man. She's yeah. awesome. Yeah. She, yeah. She, she would very, play a very good Brandy Riley in the Courage to Earn movie. Um, yes. <laughs> Um, what is something that is really important to you, but you never really get the chance to talk about it? Um, oh, there's so many things, but I think, um, going back to church after you haven't been at church a mm. while. So kind of like the rededication, rededicating of your life to Jesus mm. is something that's really important to me. Um, it doesn't, necessarily fit into my business. Um, but anytime I get an opportunity to just sit down with somebody and share my heart, that's kind of what we talk about. Oh, Brandy, you just like struck a huge chord with me. Cause that is, I mean, that's obviously, um, that's something I talk about actually pretty frequently on this podcast is how like, this isn't a Christian podcast, but I make it like, it's not a secret that it's a podcast hosted by a Christian. Um, and so right. I, I very openly share my faith on here. And I love the opportunity, especially when I have, uh, because I have such a wide variety and and kind of diverse set of guests. And I have a lot of people on here who um, maybe aren't a Christian or aren't a believer. Um, and so I love being able to kind of just share my heart um, with them and, and hear their story and kind of where they're coming from. And, um, you know, but I, I didn't grow up in the church. And so I, you know, I, I, but I went to church as a kid at times because I thought it was like something you were supposed to do. But if you'd asked me like when I was a teenager, what the gospel is, I would have been like, uh, I don't know, like uh, right. huh? yeah. a, a choir, gospel choir, huh? Um, you know, and so becoming a Christian later in my twenties, you know, it's something that I love to talk with people about. So I love that you shared that because that is, um, that's not an uncommon story for people. Um, and so I love that you you use that as an opportunity to talk about it when you get a chance. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That is amazing. Um, okay. And then this is my last question. And this is the question that I ask all of my guests. And it is, what does it mean to you to run a business with purpose? Running a business with purpose to me means that I am – walking and the gifts that I have, I'm being authentic to what my heart wants, um, while also serving what other people need. So I'm not just looking at what do I want to get from this business or this, these tasks that I'm doing that make up my business, but you know, is what I'm doing really serving other people? Mm. Is it really helping them or am I just serving my ego? Mm. Oh, man, Brandy, that's good. That's good. Uh, well, I am so grateful to to you for just coming on here and sharing with us um, your passion for um, 
challenging and encouraging other women to know their their worth and and like in a literal sense sometimes we say like oh know your worth know your worth but no like sometimes there are times like we need to know our actual like dollar sign worth right. yes. mm-hmm. <laughs> and yes. that is hard um and but you have created such an incredible platform um for encouraging women to know their dollar sign worth um when it comes to the workplace and and the content creation space and all of that. So I just, I'm so thankful for you and thanks for coming on. And I loved getting to, ch- to chat with you friend. Yeah. Thank you, Molly. This was awesome. This was really great. I'm really proud of you. Thank you for having me. I'd love to know what you loved about this episode or something that you learned. Um, if you do, let me know on social media. You can find me at Still Being Molly or at Business with Purpose Podcast on Instagram or Facebook. And don't forget to use that hashtag Business with Purpose Podcast. Also, check out and shop the Seiko Designs Fall Collection at SeikoDesigns.com slash Molly Stillman. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode. If you're a first-time listener, welcome. Be sure to visit the archives for past shows featuring incredible entrepreneurs and business owners that are literally changing the world with what they do for a living. And if you're a regular listener of the show, thank you for tuning in week in and week out, and thank you for your support. Head on over to iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts and click that subscribe button to help make sure you never miss a new episode of the show. And while you're there, take a moment to leave a review. Leaving a review helps me to know what you are liking and how the show is personally impacting you. This show is edited by my incredible husband and executive producer, John Stillman, with support from Kelly Dalton, and the music is by Mark Killian of Third Wheel Media. Thank you so much for listening, and go do something good with purpose on purpose. Purpose.